Bishop is in the back. Bishop Burrow, Lady Burrow. And then we're going to give a shout out. New Vision Apostolic Church in Niles, Michigan. I'm going to go quick because I want to stick to the time. But I do believe that God has given me a word, so I'm excited to share that with you. Um, I want to read from 1 Kings chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And I'm going to just go. You can catch me. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house, which I have hallowed from my name, will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And I want to cross-reference 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. It says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. The title of my sermon for today is going to be, For Best Results, Follow the Direction. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you have your way in this house tonight, God. You know what we need. Use me as a weapon for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I just want to tell a story. The root of this particular story I'm going to tell begins with King Solomon. King Solomon's disobedience. We all know the story of King Solomon, who was visited by the Lord at a young age, and he asked for the gift of wisdom. And um, that was when he had the opportunity to ask for anything in the world. But this same King Solomon, who was so wise, the son of the great King David, is the same one who in the end ended up turning his heart away from God and dying in a place where his heart was not right before him. This is living proof that having a lot of knowledge doesn't make you smart. Uh -huh. Because with all of that wisdom, he still uh, wasn't wise enough to obey God. But the genius of King Solomon was put to work in the kingdom. He was anointed to carry out the vision of his father, King David, to build a house, a temple for the Lord. Uh -huh. This beautiful temple and palace took him over 20 years to build. It was so ornate and so massive. Nothing like it had ever been built before. It was glorious. But he eventually perverted and polluted the beauty and the glory of this temple by also building high places That's and right. temples for false gods and idols. He began to give way to satanic influences in the kingdom, even after the sharp warning of the Lord, which we just read. And he was now responsible for ushering in a new era of spiritual sickness, mixing the worship of God with the worship of the lust of the flesh. 1 Kings 11 and 8 says, Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and Milgram, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, uh -huh. which burned incense and sacrificed unto their gods. I want to take a moment right here and say something about that. Be careful who you yoke yourselves with, uh -huh. who you're dating, who you're in relationship, having children, especially who you're marrying. Young people, I don't know if you know this, but you just can't be sleeping around, walking around, messing with just anybody. Uh -huh. Don't you know that there's a spiritual exchange that takes place when you become intimate with a person? The Bible says Solomon was led astray by the lust of his wives. He yeah. loved them and they loved the devil. This became his downfall because there's more happening in relationships, more happening in sex and marriage than you can see with your two eyes. When you are unevenly yoked, you're entangling yourself with spirits that can knock you right outside of the will of God for your right, life. Right. And just as King Solomon, you can become bound with strongholds uh -huh. that you may never be able to unloose. Uh -huh. Now these false gods that were just listed in the scripture are still worshipped today. The high places were places where people would go, they would worship, they would burn incense, pray, and sacrifice to other gods. The sacrifice portion was vital to the worship of these false gods. In these high places, people were actually engaging in abominable activity. They were burning their firstborn children uh -huh. for the favor of these gods. They were performing blood rituals, engaging in prostitution, especially homosexual activity at these sites of worship. Innumerable amounts of baby bones are found in these sites today. Historians have revealed that the Bible changed the syllables of the names of these gods and goddesses because it's an abomination to say their names in totality. But here's what I want you to understand. Preacher. These false gods and goddesses have not disappeared. They have simply changed form. Right. Many popular horror movies and mainstream TV shows use these gods' names in the chance during the film. You know, in the dark movies, the vampire movies, when they chant, they use real rituals, real curses, real witchcraft. Your favorite Marvel comic book films have named lead characters after these false gods. I 
just named, just last month they erected an arch of bail in Washington, D.C., complete with a ceremonial ritual, which was attended by many U.S. governors, celebrities, and prominent people. Google it. Check the news. What am I saying? You may look at this text and see something ancient, but I'm here to tell you that these gods are being worshipped more now than they ever were before. The number of those who practice Wicca and occultism have now outweighed denominations as common as the Presbyterian Church. You better wake up and do your research. Abortion is linked to child sacrifice to these false gods, Molech and Shamash. They have to make abortion free. If you have cancer, if you have any other sickness, you can't get health care. But this, they are putting the bill because there are things going on in the spirit realm that you do not see. Forces that work in the spirit realm that we are too asleep to notice. Don't come to church and nonchalantly worship God and then refuse and reject to acknowledge anything more of the spirit realm. God said that we're wrestling against principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, and high places. We are living in the supernatural realm. God says the things that we see are temporal, but the things which we see not, those things are eternal. I say the things which are sacrificed to the Gentiles are sacrificed to devils and not to God. He said, I would not have you to have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. So needless to say, after King Solomon turned away his heart from the Lord, the Lord was angry. This was the beginning of the downfall of the kingdom of Israel. This disobedience, this self-serving, lust gratifying spirit caused the glorious kingdom of Israel to be ripped into two. A civil war was coming and Israel would never be the same. The Lord ripped the kingdom from King Solomon's hands uh -huh. and left his legacy, King David's legacy, with only two of the 12 tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Because of King Solomon's disobedience, the Lord began to stir up enemies against his kingdom and the people who had reasons to be angry and take vengeance against the throne, God began to release them. See, there are certain things that God is protecting you from uh -huh. right now that you don't see. Somebody say we're best results follow the direction. Come on, somebody. He removed the hedge of protection from around the king. The Lord sent a prophetic word that he was going to take the kingdom from Solomon's family and give it to his servant, a man named Jeroboam. And after a series of events, King Jeroboam sat on the throne of Israel and not the son of King Solomon. And this is the real story that I want to tell y'all tonight. To the next king of Israel, King Jeroboam, the Lord promised the same thing that he promised King Solomon, that he would make his name great uh -huh. if he kept his commandments. And to King Jeroboam, God gave ten tribes of Israel, while King Solomon's son only ruled over the two. But Jeroboam had insecurities. Uh -huh. He wasn't from that royal bloodline. He didn't have that popular swag that King David and King Solomon and probably King Solomon's son Rehoboam had. And Jeroboam's insecurities after being made king caused him to begin to make bad decisions. Uh -huh. He felt that if the people went up to worship in that beautiful temple in Jerusalem, that they would no longer want him as king and would want the king of Judah. So the Bible says he took counsel and he began to make two casts of gold for the people to worship instead of having them going up and worshiping God in the temple. He began to make self-centered, unspiritual decisions concerning the church uh -huh. in order to protect his seat. Verse 30 says, and this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. Turn to your neighbor say, but for best results, he should have followed the direction. See, it's interesting that the Bible says he took counsel while he was in this insecure mental space. We don't have to ask where this counsel came from. The Bible doesn't have to say because the same self-serving self -serving satanic counsel that King uh, uh, Jeroboam received is the same counsel that King Solomon received. Uh -huh. It's the same counsel that Adam and Eve received. Counsel that instructed them to serve themselves instead of serving God. Uh -huh. A small whisper that encouraged him to do it his own way, to forsake the instruction of the Lord. So King Jeroboam began to make more shrines, build more high places. 
Lord, and the king's hand restored him again. It's interesting how he called God the Lord your God, as if he could no longer identify with God. He sat on the throne of God's people. He was God's chosen, the king of the children of Israel. Yet he did not call the God who made all of that possible his God. This shows us that no matter how gifted and blessed you may be, even while leading in the kingdom, you can get to a place where you are so far from God that you are confused enough that you forget who you are in him. Where you feel like you can no longer get a prayer through. Where you can no longer safely call God yours. There's a place where after being involved in so much mess, so much carnality, so much sin, that you no longer know who you are or who you are, whose you are. And can I just take a moment right there and talk to somebody who used to know who you were, but now you are confused. Let me tell you, it's the enemy that has confused you. Because God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, gender confusion, sexuality confusion, can't figure out your purpose, don't know what your destiny is, don't know what your life is, no peace, no passion, no dreams. Satan the Lord rebuke you. God knows who you are. The numbers of hair on your head are known by him. He foreknew you, and those he foreknew, he predestinated, and those he predestinated, then he also called, and those he called, then he justified, and those he justified, those he glorified. What then can we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The Lord restored his hand after the prophet prayed, and King Jeroboam offered the young prophet a reward to come home and eat with him. But the word of the Lord had already come to the prophet, instructing him not to go. He quoted, it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt not eat bread, nor drink water there, nor turn and go back the way you came. See, you can't eat at everybody's table. Can I repeat that, y'all? You can't eat at everybody's table. Every table is not for you to eat at. Can God trust you to be obedient? When the opportunity comes to eat at the table of greatness, can you be obedient to the Lord? Do you have the conviction to withstand the temptations of a king? You can't eat at the Lord's table and the devil's table. I hear that. Somebody, stay away from the table. There are certain things served at the table that you may never recover from. God said, don't turn. Don't go back the way you came. Walk in the opposite direction and prevent results. You better follow the direction. Up, y'all, but can I just bring out one last point? As the young prophet left and he was in route home, there was an older prophet who had heard about the powerful works that God was doing in this young prophet's life. And the word of God says he quickly saddled up and found him and came and offered him the same temptation that the king did to come and eat at his table. But catch this the young prophet responds that the Lord instructed him not to go. But then the old prophet lies and he says, he says, oh, God sent me and said it was okay for you to go. So at this word, the young prophet listened. He got up and he followed the old prophet home. But for best results, he should have won y'all. Follow the directions without seeking the Lord to be sure or looking for a confirmation. He just gets up and goes. How many of you know that everybody is not happy for you when they hear about what God is doing in your life? So the devil has people on assignment to tear your destiny right out of your hands. See, the young prophet let his guard down because he said, well, he's the prophet. 
better than that.